This is College Hockey Southwest Weekly, your source for college hockey in the desert southwest, part of the Ice Time Hockey SW.com family. Well, welcome in hockey fans in the desert southwest around the United States, Canada, around the world. We've been to China, we've been to Alaska, we've been all over the place. But right now, Paul Hornstein, my co-host, is joining us live on Long Island, New York, one day before Thanksgiving a uh, holiday oh, yeah. sets in on us, and I can already tell by the smile on his face he's feeling better about not having to go to work tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's 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 not even that. It's just a getting up at 4.30 in the morning. I can do without <laughs> that. That's enough to make me want to be done. Right, I hear yeah. The job itself is fine. <laughs> All right. Well, Paul Hornstein on Long Island. Scott Strandy here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Paul, we're finally back to hockey after two weeks oh, off. It'll be 20 Lord, days between it's games. About time. By the time they drop the puck. And then guess what? 13 straight weeks of hockey till the end of the season. There are no breaks. So uh, Coach Powers told me he liked it, but what was he going to say, right? Yeah, <laughs> he well, no well, what, does he have a choice? No, he doesn't <laughs> no. have a choice. And he'll, he'll like it as long as his players stay healthy. If they don't stay healthy, he won't like it as much. Well, exactly. And that's why on this week's Hockey Talk, which will be up tomorrow, we, uh, we had a little visit with Leanne Blinn. Um, you had a chance to hear it. Uh, she, she's she's one of a kind, and they are so fortunate to have her. Uh, I thought it was fitting on Thanksgiving because every player you talk to and every coach you talk to says, "Thank God we got Leanne Blinn on our on our side." So yeah, um, well, she's made a mark, no doubt. In two years, uh, I joked with her a little bit about pushing the bus. I joked with her a little bit about maybe having the guys pull an airplane in the off season. Uh, a little bit this, of everything, but. This, she, She's a key. Does she have a hidden camera at the dinner tables to make sure they don't eat too much tomorrow? <laughs> no, but if they do eat too much tomorrow, she's going to work it off. Oh, them. yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, maybe I should come and hang out there for a little while and have her work right. off me because uh, I'm well, I thought, sure that I will eat too much tomorrow. I thought it was interesting in what Coach Power said about the workouts over the last couple of weeks. He's kept them short. He tried right. to keep them between 30 and 45 minutes. Um, I heard him on the la- on Tuesday's practice when I was there. Somebody hollered out, 38 minutes. And he goes, okay, it's right where I want to be. So they were actually timing the practices. But the intensity was there all the way through. Everybody, well, so. felt, everybody felt healthy. Uh, they felt good and strong. He was really happy to have Gruber back at close to 100% and have Phil Bunces back at close to 100%. So that's good news. Our pitchfork profile this week with Johnny Walker also touched on health. I got right. one kicked out of Johnny. I'll kind of tease that a little bit, but I asked him about if he missed Joey Decord, and he said, "Yeah." He said, "There's not too many guys that can throw past three three zones on the tape, so I can go in on a breakaway." Yeah, well, you know Johnny. He's pretty camera shy. He doesn't really say much when you get him, <laughs> uh, you know, behind right. a microphone or in front of a camera. So uh, that was that was good of you to get some of that out of him. That was different. <laughs> Exactly. He's uh, he's a lot of fun to have on. So thanks to Johnny for being our pitchfork profile this week. Okay, let's let's start talking about Vermont. They come in here a little deceptive, one eight and one. Right. Um, Coach Powers is a little bit worried about the fact that they're coming in to a building that he he said to us in the uh, in the Powers play is that this kind of this building fits their profile. They want to play hard. They want to play heavy. They want to tight corners. I don't know about the low ceilings, but they uh, he's a little worried about that. Plus, they have perhaps the best goaltender in all of college hockey. Well, he's definitely the best kept secret as far as goaltenders in college hockey are concerned. Uh, Coach Powers kind of built his teams a little bit that way the first few years uh, to play big and to play heavy. And he's trying to transition it now. And I mean, he's, he's said that many times. Uh, but uh, Stefanos Lekos is was probably the best goaltender in the in the country last year but because his team didn't win very much people didn't he had uh, like a 930 save percentage and his goals against average was around 2 um he still got the same save percentages this year uh but his goals against is up a little bit um not that it matters because honestly and this week makes me nervous, like every week makes me nervous when my team is, is playing. Um, but this 
makes me nervous for a bunch of different reasons. One, um, we keep saying they're going to learn from the layoffs and, and the downtime uh, ASU, but I haven't quite seen it yet. So make that Friday night makes me nervous right away because even if it takes them 10 minutes of game time to get their legs back under them, that's still 10 minutes that Vermont, who's been playing the last couple of weeks, um, can put on some pressure and, 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 and get themselves off to a good start. Um, and ASU tends to struggle in those Friday night games to begin with. So... The Friday night game makes me nervous about that. Um, the goalie can steal you a game at any time, at any place. I mean, that's just a fact of hockey. Um, if you run into a hot goalie, even if the goalie by the standards that we measure them is not having a good year, that year doesn't make any difference on that particular night. So, a hot goalie or a goalie in the zone or whatever phrase you want to use on any given night can beat you. And this goalie has a lot of those nights. Yeah. He no has a about. lot of those nights. Um, so then when you take a look at what the team has done, what the Catamounts have done, um, I also worry with the fact that they are 1-8-1. and one, and I don't care how you got to one eight and one. You can overlook a team coming in at one eight and one when you're playing a top five team next week in Denver. Right. Yep, so absolutely. those are other factors that worry me. Uh, Vermont has practically not scored at all in their ten games. They've only got a. I, I think. They only have 13 goals in 10 games. Yeah, I think you're right. It's so been, It's been tough to put the uh, the puck in the net. So, so I think, you can ahead. look at it that they don't have a lot of offensive skill. Maybe they've been snake bit and are due. So which one is it? Is it is Friday night or Saturday night the night that they have their game and they break it loose? Or will they continue to stay in that? struggling offensive mode for these two games over the weekend, especially against a team that hasn't played in three weeks. Well, here's a formula, I think, and this is what ASU is going to want to do. You know, whether they can do it or not is they're going to want to get out quick. And Absolutely. Put, some, put some, some goals on the board uh, in the opening period and, and really put them back on their heels. Secondly, is I think, and I think Johnny hit it on the head. You'll hear him in the uh, Pitchfork profile, but, he said he thinks Evans starting to track the puck better now. And I think we've touched on this a couple different times. I think it's worth touching on again. Evan DeBrower didn't play a meaningful game in about 16 months. No, so no, I, it, it's, a, you know, for him to keep coming on, I think is extremely important. And I don't think we know, and Coach Power says this too, is we don't know what his ceiling is yet because he's still working his way to that point. But I can tell you, I saw him. Uh, Tuesday, we chatted a little bit outside off camera, and, and he's getting more and more confident. I said, hey, did you do anything in these two weeks off? you go anywhere? Because some of the guys went you know, went back home for a couple of days and did different things. He right. said, no. He said, I got school, and I had to keep working, he said. So I thought that was pretty interesting, that he was right here in, in Tempe, continuing to work on his game and wanting to get better. So um, well, I think well, that's important. Because if he can keep them off the boards and they can obviously score some goals early, that's the formula for success all the way through. Well, naturally, but the fact of the matter is, so far in three and a half or four years, they haven't really shown that they'll do that. Right. Yep. So that's why when you go into every series, no matter who they're playing, it, the, the, those Friday night games make you edgy because their history has been, regardless of who's been on the roster, is that of the two games in a weekend, the second game, which is usually a Saturday, uh, is their better game of the two. Now, right. what the reasons for that? It's not like they've changed much in the practice schedule. It's not like they've, they're have they doing anything system-wise a little different. Just for whatever reason, 
they struggle on Friday and make major improvements from Friday into Saturday or from game one into game two. So it's, in, it's interesting you said that because now after this weekend, it, it's some odd scheduling going on from now until the first week in January because – what happens is after Vermont series, which is a typical 705 Friday and Saturday, then we go to Denver coming to town and we're going to go 705 at Oceanside on Friday night. But then Saturday is a Pac-12 TV game. So they moved it to 430 and they're going to play at Gila River, which has never been really nice for, for ASU. Uh, no, not really. So they'll, they'll move there. Then the following week, they go to Michigan Tech and it's, or I'm sorry, Michigan, Michigan State. State. And uh, it's a Saturday, Sunday afternoon. And then they go to Omaha, which is Saturday, Sunday afternoon. Then they come back home, if you will, and then travel out to California for Harvard, which is Saturday and Sunday afternoon. And then they have Michigan Tech, which is Saturday and Sunday afternoon at home. So the next, you know, four uh, weeks after this one is going to be interesting. Uh, and then after uh, Michigan Tech, they play Brown on a Saturday and a Sunday, too. Yeah. At okay. Brown. Hopefully, yeah, just, I'll be at those. Yeah, so just keep uh, just keep building them up. Coach Powers alluded to that in the Powers play. Um, you know, you asked a question, and I referred it on to Coach Powers because of the big football rivalry going on at 8.30 p.m. Um, Pacific, or Mountain Time with ASU and U of eight, A. 8, eight or 8.30. Uh, okay, maybe it's 8 o'clock. It was 8 or 8.30, one of the two. Either, Either way, way it's going to conflict. It's going to be right. Yeah, it's going to be right with the Sun Devil game. And Coach Powers said that you know they they try to accommodate when they can, but unfortunately their schedule was made and football moved there via TV. So it really is not much. He he reiterated again that the games are sold out and that their fan base is going to be in the building and he doesn't expect anything to really change. He's hoping that they get a win and have time to, to watch the end of the football game and watch them win as well. Well, they, if, if the game's starting at 7 o'clock uh, local time, uh, unless they don't <laughs> play quadruple overtimes in college hockey until right. the NCAA tournament. So you're talking uh, the way college football runs. You're yeah. talking about midway through the second quarter by the time the hockey game ends. So. <laughs> right. Okay, let's take Maybe. a quick break. Let's bring in uh, Coach Powers for the five-minute Powers play. Then when you and I will react to uh, what Coach had to say this week. Yeah. And uh, we'll be right back with Coach Greg Powers in the five-minute Powers play. Welcome in, hockey fans in the Desert Southwest, College Hockey Southwest Weekly. we got the coach. Greg Powers is with me for the five-minute Powers play. Coach, uh, you know, we talked about this early in the year, but three bye weeks in your first 10 games, and now you're ready to get back and roll into about, what, 13 weeks in a row or something like that? How, how do you guys feel right now? We feel great. We do. I mean, getting Gruber and, and Phil back is a huge shot in the arm, and um, we're excited to, to just play again. Um, you know, we've kept practices short. The pace has been great. Um, we, we anticipate uh, a, a team that's really fired up to be on the ice on Friday. I was going to say, when you look at their record, it's kind of deceiving, isn't it? Vermont coming in here at 1-8-1, and one, but coming off of a tie against Boston U, and you know what to expect out of this team. They're going to be ready to play, aren't they? They're a good team. They're a really good team. Like, you know, it's, we're not taking them lightly, you know, because they have one win. They've had a tough schedule. They have maybe the best goalie in college hockey. He's really good. Um, and uh, and they're heavy. They're heavy. It, it, it'll, this place will probably suit their game pretty well. Um, so we, we're we're we got a work cut out for us. Um, you know, you look at like just any given night this year, especially it seems everybody's just beating everybody. Right. You know, and and um, everybody's good. There's 60 teams. You hear me say it all the time. So we have to be at our best to beat anybody. We're not we're not nearly good enough yet as a program to. Uh, win games uh, consistently uh, by not playing our best hockey. You know, I hear a lot of talk out there, and I look at your schedule. Last year at this time, 10 games, you were 7-3-0. Oh. Now you're 6-4-0. Oh. Really not much different. I mean, the schedule was pretty similar probably, except you got Ohio State here last year and Minnesota State there this year. Yeah. Um, 13 weeks in a row, and we talk about some, some different things coming up because you're going to – 
get Vermont here, then you get Denver here, yep. but then you have Saturday Sunday games. Tell me about those Saturday Sunday games and how do you prepare any different for those short turnarounds? No, I, I, our guys like them. We're, we're confident with with their conditioning levels and all the great work that Leanne does with them. Where um, they don't they don't really affect us, and and it just. You know, it just kind of happened. You know, I mean, we have a short turnaround game, you know, Friday, Saturday with Denver because of uh, the Saturday game uh, being on TV with the Pac-12 network. So that's the reason for that early start. And then with Michigan State, um, you know, there's exams and, and stuff like that. And then and then with Omaha, um, I, I think it had to do something with their, their basketball team or I don't know. Um, and then at Harvard, um, it's also during the holiday season. And then, and then when we come back here, uh, Michigan Tech made the request to do a Saturday Sunday because they're coming out from their Great Lakes Invitational and they wanted that extra day. So we've done that with um, with with other programs. You know, we did it with Michigan State, um, asking to for a Saturday Sunday because of, of of rest and recovery. So it just happens that they're all kind of back to back to back to back. And um, and uh, what's what's good is we have to make we have to make the most of this busy December. There's a lot of teams that have three, three and a half, four weeks off, and we don't. And, and, and we think this is an advantage. We really do, because then we can hit that back half, um, hopefully hitting the ground running and playing our best hockey. So we look at the schedule right now. You guys come in as number 14 ranked team in the pairwise, which I know is the only thing that really matters, right? Because that's what gets you into the national tournament. But how much can you improve on that with wins over the next five weeks leading up to the end of the year? I mean, hugely, you know, we're, we're right where we need to be, you know, and, and um, like I always say, we're focused on one thing Friday against Vermont and, and the rest will fall into place. But if you look beyond and, and, and kind of tear apart our schedule, we have some really big time um, games coming up. You know, I mean, we have Vermont and then after that, a top 10 pairwise team in Denver. And then after that, right now, a top 10 pairwise team in Michigan State. And then after that, a top 20 pairwise team in Omaha. And then after that, a top five pairwise team in Harvard. So we have uh, a great opportunity in front of us um, to come together and, and get closer as a, as a group and, um, and really tackle December, get some big wins as a program, and it all starts Friday. Okay, two things. We talked a little bit two weeks ago about the bumps and bruises, and you said everybody needed some time off and they got it. I'm guessing everybody healed up pretty nicely. Yeah, everybody's healthy, um, so that's it's it's a great luxury to have. Um, a couple guys uh, a little bit sick, but but you know we're keeping away and just so they don't spread anything that could play or practice. But again, we we, we don't you know we're, we're we're practiced out. You know we we've been limiting practice this week to thirty to forty five minutes and, and and with good pace and some purpose. And the guys have really taken well to that, and they should be flying on Friday. All right, I want to talk to you a little bit about Sun Devil Athletics because your football team came off of a huge win last Saturday. They got another big game coming up, but tell me about Sun Devil Athletics and how they all coincide uh, the championships that the, that the teams are winning and the teams that are knocking off top teams and your program. How are they all tied together? Well, I mean, I think it's just a culture. It's, it's, a, it's expectations and a culture that starts at the top with Ray, um, hiring like-minded coaches that – um, want to make names for the program. Um, you know, what Zeke's doing with wrestling, beating Penn State, first dual loss in 60 meets for Penn State, that's an incredible accomplishment. And then Herm turns around when, when nobody gave them a chance to win that game on Saturday and, and did the unthinkable and, and really dominated from start to finish, minus those last six minutes. Um, huge win for the program. What Sonya's doing with volleyball, um, has been really impressive and, and she took over that program when it was really down and and not winning much and, and now they're knocking on the door to get in an NCAA tournament and and then obviously you know Charlie's winning like Charlie always does and 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 Bobby is, is off to a good start they, they damn near beat uh, Virginia who's a national championship team um, so it, everything's you know everything's you know looking really good in Sun Devil Athletics right now. How does that affect your players? Do they kind of get the vibe that, hey, you know what, if, if the football team wins big, it's our turn to win big too? I, I don't know. I, I don't think it really affects us, to be honest. I mean, it, 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 it gives everybody a sense of pride, especially when, when you see the pitchfork succeeding on a national stage and a big stage like it did on ES, or on ABC. Yeah. It's a national ABC game. And um, all of our guys, you know, it was great because they all, and I got to go, we all got to go to the football game Saturday. And, and generally we only get to experience those miserable, 
you know, first two games at the start of the season where they play maybe a, a one double A team and, and it's not close and it's 115 degrees out. So we got to go where the weather was beautiful. The crowd was tremendous against um, Oregon, who's an unbelievable program. And, and, and so for the guys that get to experience that in the middle of our season, I think it, it probably fired them up a little bit. All right, let's wrap things up by uh, talking just a little bit about Vermont. You said they're big and heavy, but uh, this style fits their games. Their goaltender is top-notch. What do you expect for them offensively? Do they have the offense to, uh, to bring it? Yeah, I mean, I, they, have, they have talent, you know, and, and, I mean, the strength of their team is their goaltender, and any coach will tell you um, if you could pick one strength, that's going to be it. So, um, you know, we, we're going to have to, you know, get in his eyes and, and, and throw a lot of pucks and bodies at him to beat him um, and just play, play the way we play. You know, we, we never focus too much on the other team. Uh, we study them and, and, and show the guys our, our film on them and, and, and talk about tendencies, but we focus on us. That's all we've been focused on. Um, and we, we, we just like anybody else, if we go out and we execute um, the way that we, uh, we want to, we, we like our chances. All right, so it's rivalry week with U of A coming here for football. You guys have a big weekend series. Was there any talk at all about because of that game being moved later, maybe changing your game time, or are you guys set with playing here like normal? No, we've done a really good job of avoiding conflicts. I mean, this is the first one I can remember in a long time. And um, we have to set our schedule. We have to set our schedule way before football does with TV and all that good stuff. And it just so happened there was a conflict. Our game sold out both nights. It's not a big deal. We'll get our, our staunch supporters here, and it won't affect football and, and vice versa. So um, hopefully we, uh, we get off the ice on Saturday after a big win, and we can catch the end of the – the football game and, and see our guys beat U of A. All right, Coach, have a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, it's nice to see you guys back on the ice again, and let's go for uh, 13 straight weekends and see what we, what we come out at the end. Absolutely. Thanks, Scott. Pre-game like a pro, post-game like a champion at College Bar and Grill. Located across the street from the iconic A Mountain and Sun Devil Stadium and a quick walk from Wells Fargo Arena, College Bar and Grill is your home for the best local craft beer, delicious creative cocktails, tasty food, and Tempe's best atmosphere for Arizona State Athletics. College Bar and Grill. Pre-game like a pro, post-game like a champion. Online at ilovecollege.co. a chance to hear the coach we haven't had a chance to visit uh for a couple of weeks now because we visited right. with him then they were off last week and now he's back on with us you saw him in front of the new banner he yeah, came up very nice that, very nice the new banner actually touched it to make sure it was real it was real <laughs> but it wasn't cgi well what, no. what happened did you, did you, it was yeah. a little above, cgi uh, is a little above the budget uh, there scott uh, yeah i think so <laughs> but he, uh, he liked the fact that we had that up there. So, yeah, sure. Uh, Coach deserves it. He does a good job, and we appreciate having him on. But your thoughts, your impressions for the, uh, the five-minute powers play, which went about eight minutes. Well, uh, you know, I, I think it's it, – it, you want to hear certain things. Uh, you got the update on the guys that were injured. Um, it makes me a little nervous that uh, – that, uh, Gruber not a hundred percent, unless I misheard that. Uh, but it seems like Bunces is ready to go. Um, well, I, I mean, think with I think with the upper body injury that that Gruber had, and I think we can all kind of guess what that was. But the upper body injury, I don't know if you ever get back to a hundred percent in the fir- in the season, or but don't he, or don't know until he gets hit. Yeah, and he's he's definitely back to the point where he's you know he's been cleared to play. How about that? Yeah. So that's good news. But okay. uh, he's a big face-off man for him, and so is Phil Bunces, and uh, also big in the corners. Both yeah, well, big in the pucks up. Listen, uh, as we've already noted, they're going to play 13 straight weekends. They need everybody to be healthy because yeah. there is yep. no question that the depth is going to get challenged because you can't play 13 weekends in a row uh, without a, a, a weekend off and not suffer bumps and bruises. No matter how good Leanne Blinn is, no matter how uh, in shape the players are, it's still hockey. Right. And un- un- unless they're playing no contact, uh, guys are going to get hurt. Guys are going to get bumps and bruises. And 
Yeah, and I think, and that, that's why the guys that aren't playing right now have to stay sharp and have to continue to improve. And that's what I look at at practice right now. Uh, the guys like Phil Zong and um, – I'm sorry, not Phil Zong, um, Peter Zong. Um, watch Peter Zong and, and Buntis and Gavita Janssens and, and uh, the Max Balansons, all of those guys. How do they play in practice, right? And I've seen their level continually get better and get better and get better. I'll say it again. I wish we could take Carson Prier and take the red shirt off and put him on the lineup because I really like what I see on him in practice. But we can't do that, so we're going to have to wait till next year for him. But um, I, I think they're in good shape depth-wise. I really do. And, uh, you know, we never want to see anybody get hurt. But if somebody does get hurt, you, uh, you feel comfortable with the guys that they have. Coach Powers keeps telling me this, too. He still doesn't think they played their best hockey yet, which uh, is encouraging, I guess. If you well, keep winning without listen, that, I I can understand that sentiment. Um, it's it's you know they haven't really had a chance to get into a groove yet, All right? Because the well, schedule has been so well, they certainly <laughs> will now. Uh, we're I, I would assume by the end of December we're going to know whether or not we've seen the ceiling. Yep. Okay. Denver, Harvard, Michigan Tech. Um, Omaha, um, Omaha's at least has been playing better this year than people thought. Tech is playing a little bit better this year than people thought, and those games will be very interesting. Uh, Denver's a top five team. Harvard is right up there too. So we are not going to see any soft teams on this schedule uh, for most of the next six weeks. Uh, I know what coach said because coaches say what coaches say. Um, Vermont is one eight and one for a reason. That reason is they have not scored goals. And while you can't, as we said, take anybody lightly, this is a team and these are two games, just like those season opening games against Mercyhurst with a team that's 57th in the pairwise that you have to win. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you cannot lose one of these two games this weekend. If you lose this weekend, you can just about kiss any chance for an NCAA tournament bid goodbye. I I, I firmly believe that. Um, like I said, we're not talking about a team that's 30th in the pairwise. We're talking about a team that's 57th, and you're playing them at home. You cannot lose these two games. And that's where... We're going to – where the, the pressure is going to come from this weekend. It's going to be internal, not external. But they have to win these two games, especially with the schedule coming up. Yeah, well, I totally agree. It's, it's – you know, I, I can't quite go as far as being must win because until – in my book, they need to go 18-8 and eight somehow, some way. You can't lose these games, Scott. You can't is lose it, these games. Is it easier? Yeah. Is it easier if you don't lose these games? Certainly. You, but, no, listen, uh, you had you had your one slip up. You had you had your one slip up. No, okay, I'm my sorry. friend, I, it's too it's too early in the season for that. Listen, it, if you lose you, next week one of the games against Denver, that's until, that's something different. But until until weird. you have yeah, but what happens if you lose a game this weekend but you sweep Denver? You've just X'd it out, right? Okay, I'm yeah, just but, saying. I'm yeah, just but saying. We're, we're playing the odds here. Yeah, okay. Well, we don't. We're, we're not going to play the odds. We're not realistic. Vegas tonight. <laughs> we're just. I'm just trying to be realistic. And uh, yeah, it, I, I get it, I, and I agree. They they need to win these games, but you know, put them as a must win right now. There is no must win until they're down to to uh, needing 18 wins, and there's only 17 games. Because yeah, that's, well, that's what's going to eliminate them officially. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, I. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, you, uh, you're you're you the can, guy that tells me it's one game at a time. Right? It is so one game at a time. One game at a time. It is one. Anyway. I'm saying you can't afford to lose any of these one games coming up. Uh, yeah, exactly. You got to win them all. I mean, I think that's what they'd like to do is win them all. We all know they're not. But who, there who, is, doesn't, who doesn't? Who doesn't want to? I go into this game. I, I feel like I'll lose, I want to lose today. Of course they want to win. <laughs> but I think that the bottom line of it is, is that, 18 more wins secures that NCAA spot. 
it doesn't matter how they get them. It matters when they get them and what that total is in the end of February. So anyway, let's uh, let's take another quick break. Let's jump into Johnny Walker, our Pitchfork profile. It's always great to listen to Johnny and hear some different things. I tried to poke him a little bit and find out some different things. So let's uh, listen to Johnny Walker and come back and uh, do a little evaluation on the uh, Johnny for Hobie 2020, which got a chuckle out of him, by the way, after I said I'm that. Sure it did. <laughs> we'll be right Welcome in, hockey fans in the desert southwest. It's another Pitchfork profile. You know this guy sitting next to me on the right, Johnny Walker, is with me. So, Johnny, first of all, happy Thanksgiving and happy two-week break. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Tell me what it's like to have the kind of schedule that you guys have had so far where you've had three off weeks in your first ten games. Yeah, I mean, it, it's good for uh, guys to get, uh, you know, back back to 100% and, uh, you know, recharge the batteries a little bit, and, and we're going to come out flying on, on Friday against Vermont. Tell me about Johnny Walker, okay? Uh, you got new line mates this year. Uh, you look comfortable out there. You've been moving the puck a lot. What's, what's Johnny Walker's goal? I mean, we all know you can score the puck, but I think you like to pass it just as much, don't you? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of things are closing up quicker this year. I think uh, some teams are starting to key on it a little bit. They, they know I like to shoot the puck. So, um, you know, Sanch and Como are, are in the right spots. and. Uh, making it really easy to play with, so uh, just making making plays when they're there and, and trying to keep it simple. Let's revisit the season that started way back in July for you. <laughs> you guys came together, you went to China, <laughs> had a good experience down there, you come back here now, and then, then we've already talked about, you know, a lot of people will ask me, they go, what's going on with ASU hockey? And I'll go like, what? They were 7-3 and three through 10 games last year, they're 6-4 and four this year. Do you see a lot of difference between your two teams from last year and this year? Um, you know, I, I think that we've uh, we could be better than seven and three yeah. uh, this year. I think we have, you know, a couple uh, couple losses that we'd like to have back, but uh, it's going to happen throughout a 30, 36, whatever game season. So, um, you know, our our goal is just to get better every week, and I think we're doing that. Um, you know, by the end of the year last year, we were we were a great hockey team, and and I think we picked up right where we left off last year. So we're just trying to improve. Um, every every week and every year so I think we're doing that and, and definitely headed in the right direction. Coach Powers tells me that here you guys are like 50 percent of what he expects out of you <laughs> so you, does he tell you guys that too on the ice that, that you're only halfway to your potential? Uh, no but you can kind of feel it you know guys are guys are coming together now and and getting more comfortable being out on the ice together and uh, a lot of new faces too so it, it, t it just takes time to build that chemistry and and uh, start clicking on all cylinders. So I, I think that, that that could be right, and that that's actually pretty dangerous if if we're only 50% of what what we can what we can be. Okay, a couple things I want to touch on. Number one is is health and strength and conditioning. I just had Leanne Blinn in here, and she she's uh, she's been a godsend for you guys. But she talks about just how much she pushes you guys. What's it like to work with Leanne Blinn? Yeah, I mean it's great. Uh, she's changed changed my uh, my game quite a bit, um, putting on more weight and and uh, playing a bit heavier and, and healthier this year um, while still keeping keeping the speed up and, and being able to skate and keep up. So, um, you know, it's kind of the best of both worlds. She, she uh, you know, kicks our butt, but if there's times where she needs to let off the gas, she knows, like, uh, when, when to let up and, and kind of give us a break if we need it and we're run down a little bit. So uh, she's found that, obviously, she's been doing this a long time. She knows the balance, and, and it's uh, really paying off for us. Everybody talks around the country about the loss of Joey Decord, and it doesn't look like you guys have really dropped off a lot. I guess the only thing that might be missing is that long stretch pass from Joey yeah. Decord. It, it, are, you, are you getting Evan DeBrower a little tuned into that and going like, hey, I'm up here at the red line sometimes? Uh, no, I think that that's kind of a gift that, um, you know, Dax was, I mean, not a lot of NHL goalies, not a lot of goalies in the world can do what he did. So um, I think it's, you know, kind of asking a lot to have a goalie send a saucer through three zones right on your tape into a breakaway. So um, I'm not even sure I could do that. So I think it's kind of asking a lot for, for a goalie to do that with a with a couple different gloves on. Um, DeBrower's holding up great. He's doing, he's really getting comfortable. And, and uh, I think he's tracking the puck quite a bit better. And, um, you know, he played, he hadn't played in a year and a half uh, yeah. for a while. Takes so a little while, doesn't it? Yeah, to, to, to adjust. So I couldn't imagine. Um, you know, if I had to come in after not playing a game for a year and a half, I'd imagine I'd be I'd be pretty rusty myself. So um, he's definitely knocked that off, and and uh, he, he's he's full stride right now, and he's doing really great for us. 
Okay, let's wrap things up by talking uh, Desert Southwest and Phoenix Hockey. Uh, when you came here, it was a lot of talk about Johnny Walker staying at home, he's coming home. Now everybody seems to want to be here. Uh, if, you, if you grow up playing hockey here, you want to play for the Sun Devils. <coughs> Tell me a little bit about that and, and what's the stigma about that and how much has it grown in just your three years here at, at uh, ASU? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's just kids from Arizona that want to be here. Um, I think it's kids all, all over the country are realizing what a, what a great program is being built here and um, how we're doing things the right way. And, and it's, uh, it's really something special. So, um, you know, for me to be lucky enough to come in and help build that, I feel really fortunate. Um, I, uh, I, I am really happy with my decision and, and couldn't be more grateful. But um, as far as kids from, kids from the desert wanting to play here, I think it's great. Um, I, and I think that's part of what's helping build build Arizona hockey is is this uh, this team and this organization. So, uh, along with the Coyotes, I, I think that uh, good things and are are coming from Arizona hockey, youth hockey. All right, final question for you: the, the football team had a big win. I understand a lot of you guys, maybe not all of you, were there uh, <laughs> when they beat Oregon. As another Sun Devil athlete, does that rub off on you guys at all? Um, I mean, I think you just uh, when you see success, you want to replicate it. Um, and you know they uh, they played a great game. Um, you know a couple guys made some big plays and, and they beat a top top ten team in the country. Um, I mean we've done that too, but um, <laughs> you know we're just uh, we're, we're really proud of them and, and happy to be a Sun Devil and, and it's it's a prideful thing. But um, I think that winning is contagious and, and uh, hopefully we can keep that up. All right, keep up the winning. I joked on social media. I said they stormed the field after the Oregon one. Are we going to see somebody storm, some fans from Arizona State storm the ice in Detroit when you guys take home the national championship? Um, we'll try to keep the fans off the ice. I think it's more <laughs> of a, a thing for, for football or, or, or baseball where there's, it's not so slippery. So, All right, Johnny Walker. Johnny for Hobie 2020 is officially underway. Let's keep it rolling. Thank you. Hey, Michael here from M-Drive. My dad, a world-class scientist, actually made M-Drive for himself to stay active and continue enjoying life. And yes, M-Drive supports healthy testosterone, but it's so much more. M-Drive is the everyday supplement to fuel your drive with more energy and more strength. Listen, we'd love for you to try M-Drive too. Visit mdriveformen.com and we'll give you 20% off your first purchase. Just type in the code DRIVE at checkout. We find your prime with M-Drive. All right, Paul Hornstein, you heard the Pitchfork profile. We haven't, uh, we haven't been all over Johnny this year yet. We've kind of let him just go because he gets a lot of media attention as it is, and we like to talk to other players and other times. But I thought this is the time to talk to Johnny because it's Thanksgiving. They're 10 games in. He's still a Hobie Baker candidate. It's different this year, though. He uh, is not. He even said it himself. He thinks guys are starting to key on him this year because they know, so he has to look for other guys to get the puck to. And Absolutely. He's playing on the line with Demetrius Kumanzis and also uh, James Sanchez, who so far have been pretty formidable. I think they'd both like to be scoring more than they are, but um, that line is about as good as there is in hockey, I think. Well, listen, they've been they they playing well, and I just you know it's hard. Like I said, it's hard to get into a groove when your schedule has been inconsistent, and that's right. just a fact of life based on the fact that they're an independent and they don't have to, they can't formulate uh, non-league games, so to speak, around uh, their, a conference schedule. So they have to play teams when they can play them. And, you know, as far as Johnny is concerned, uh, I, I think you've seen some evidence this year without a doubt that, you know, he's more than just a goal scorer. He can, he can, he can pass the puck too. Uh, his skating gets better all the time. And, uh, you know, he's a smart hockey player. He knows that if you're, you know, somebody's got to be open if he's drawing two guys to him. So, um, you know, he, he's, you know, you got to pass, you know, the, the idea is to spread the scoring out to begin with. You can't have him being the only guy to score because you're not going to win that way. And, you know, so other players have to step up to relieve the pressure off of him. And, um, you know, so hopefully that's what we're going to start to see again because uh, his line's been pretty good. I know they switched things up a little bit because of some injuries in that last weekend. Um, 
of course, my memory's a little faded from that long ago, but, uh, you know. Oh, you mean from 20 days? Was it? Is it? Has it only been 20? It seems like it'll 20 be, months. Yeah, it'll be 20, 20 days from game to game. But, um, yeah, I mean, totally agree. I think he's he's growing as a hockey player. Coach Powers alluded to that at the beginning of the year. As he put more on Johnny's plate. He challenged him to do other things. He challenged him to get stronger, to be a better skater, to be healthier. Um, he, he talked to me about uh, Man Blinn and what she's done as far as strengthening him and getting him hockey ready. Um, you know, one of the things that I'll, I'll throw this out about Leanne too, is she always tells me that the guys are eager to, eager to come in there. And she goes, sometimes it gets a little frustrating because they're too eager to come in here. So she goes, I got to kick the rear end a few, a few times to, to, to know that this isn't fun. It's supposed to be work, but yeah, well, uh, you know, I, I think that's good. And the, uh, the guys certainly appreciate her and, and she appreciates the role that she has in helping them. Uh, I did make her talk to us a little bit about the uh, the regiment on the road, what she does to try to get them right. uh, ready to play on these. Besides especially pushing on these, buses. Yeah, uh, besides pushing buses. Uh, uh, certainly on these days where you play fr- Saturday night and then have to turn around and play against Sunday afternoon. I, I just, uh, you know, maybe I'm I'm old school in this, but that that's a difficult thing. I, I just know it's more difficult than playing 705 on Saturday night, 705 on Sunday night, because you're losing four hours, sometimes five or six. Well, once again, that's where the depth comes in. And that's where guys are going to have to step up. And as she said in your interview with her for uh, Hockey Talk, uh, guys are going to have to take even a little bit better care of themselves. So, yeah. Um, you know, instead but, of. But like we but like we said on Friday nights, the way they've been sluggish getting going. You, you're not going to be able to have that be sluggish on Saturday night and then have a sluggish period on Sunday afternoon, or you're going to lose a game somewhere along the line. So I, uh, listen, it's it's you it's better another figure cha- it out. It's another challenge, uh, something that they really haven't had to do too much. Uh, they haven't played too many Saturday uh, Sunday series um, and Saturday night Sunday afternoon series. In, in, in the time they've been a D1 program. So uh, this is another challenge for them, and hopefully that they uh, live up to the challenge. So, you know, it's a matter of, uh, like she said, taking care of yourself and making the proper adjustments and making sure that you do what you have to do. Um more focus is necessary, more concentration is necessary because it'll be far too easy or easier uh, to let your game slip because you're a little more tired than you normally would be between games. So that's another thing too, uh, that focus and that concentration, uh, by the way, it also helps you stay out of the penalty box. Right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, and Coach just tell me that he wanted to work a little bit more on special teams and get get more proficient on the power play and continue to get better on the penalty kill, which every coach wants to do. But um, that starts with your goaltender. It's going to be big on Evan DeBrower again to continually. I, and I think, like I told you earlier, I think he's up to the challenge right now. I think he looks forward to being in there. And uh, I don't think he feels the jitters that he did the first part of the, uh, uh, of the season when he was really getting tested. So, okay, let's, uh, let's jump off of that because we kind of beat that down. Um, as far as the rest of the NCAA goes, the teams that are, you know, and, and I want to touch a little bit about the Fortress Invitational coming up in Vegas because out here in the West, we're going to see Harvard and ASU in Southern California for a couple of games. Right. But also, you're bringing Ohio State, Providence, Cornell, and Army into Vegas on the 3rd and 4th of January. Right. So, you're getting an influx of of six really good hockey teams at the NCAA level right here and now in the West. So to me, there's something going on here where it's become more than just a novelty. This is a push from teams to start getting things going in the West. Um, I really think, and, and this is, I don't know this. I just have this hunch that we're going to see some action over the next two years as far as adding more teams in the West? Well, let's hope so. I mean, because 
it's it's something that is needed. Uh, that the game's got two places to grow. It's either got to be the West or the South. Yep. Okay. Yep. Because there's not a whole lot of schools in the other two sections of the country that aren't already playing. Uh, you know, maybe uh, you might see somewhere. Uh, I mean, the, the schools like Syracuse, which actually has a D1 women's team. Right. Uh, you know, uh, you know, you're always hearing about that. Um, we've heard. Pittsburgh, we've heard Illinois forever, but the fact of the matter is, the place where the game's got to grow, uh, more likely than not, is going to be the West Coast, and I don't know what the solution is, um, I shouldn't even say what the solution is, I know uh, what it will take for that, besides a lot of money. And well, the, you know, three, and here's a go ahead. And you know, and and it's going to take time, and we we are anxious for it to happen overnight because we want to see it, but we just you know, it, we just have to understand it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, there are a few schools that, you know, in my estimation, because of the nature of the school, uh, that could do it if they wanted to, but. That's not likely. So, well, here's here's my quick synopsis on this whole thing. I'll kind of wrap it up with this, but um, you need three things to go D one, right? You need a competitive team in ACHA so that you're ready to compete. So you have players that you can bring in that are ready to compete. You need the dollars to fund the program, both on the men's and women's side in your college, and then thirdly, you need the facility, right? And right. everybody said it can't happen overnight, but it happened at ASU overnight without the facilities. Um, it literally overnight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it can happen that way, but I look at things right now. Here's your obvious choices, and we'll just kind of go down this road. A U of A is the most competitive ACHA team in the West, and now and it's not even close, right? But okay. they, they've come up and said, we, we can't make the jump, even if everything went our way, we can't make the jump because we don't have the proper facilities. So until they're able to get facilities, See, they've got the, a beautiful, the, the beautiful arena, but they don't have ice to practice early enough or the ice slots. Like right now, they play a lot of afternoon games because they have to accommodate the roadrunners. So, right. So they might. Well, but they don't play to, every week. They don't play every day at home. They're, the roadrunners play road games, right? Yeah, but I mean, it's still it's still tough for them to get weekends with because they got to make the schedule drive all the way around. And then there's other events in Tucson at that arena or, or building that don't allow them to play hockey when they should be playing hockey. So they're they're in the they're competitively the closest team to being a D1 team, but they don't have the building yet, and they're working on it. But, and then I don't know if the, with the building will come the resources to uh, to fund it. So that's them. UNLV was probably the next team to jump up because I think they have the Orleans, which they're going to play a couple games at in January to right. uh, to try it out again and just to see what they can draw. They got a pretty good fan base. But the problem is UNLV's competitiveness has dropped, dropped off a lot. They, they lost seven in a row now, including two last weekend to uh, the University of Arizona. So their competitiveness is down a little bit, and they need to fix that, I, I think, before they make that jump. And then you got Grand Canyon, who's another kind of sleeping giant. But let's be honest, Grand Canyon has only got one win in ACHA D1 hockey right now. They've only been at it D1 stuff for half of a – well, about a semester. So it's going to be interesting to see what Grand Canyon does in the spring and how far they push it. Because if they get better, and, and Coach Roy has told me that he intends on, on getting a much better team. I mean, he believes, and I guess this is a coach's mentality, he believes if he runs the table in the spring semester that he can get into the tournament. And well, that's, that's kind of a, you know, that's kind of a stretch. But if you believe it, and you bring the players on, who knows, right? Uh, listen, that's that's all well and good, but aren't they in the process of building a building and they had a chance to put ice in and didn't? 
Yeah, but the, it was a different it was a different situation. That building was meant to be a club sports building. It was never meant to be a hockey building. So uh, I think I, I I think there's opportunity there. There's always land that's popping up at Grand Canyon, and there's also a lot of money at Grand Canyon. Yeah, but they're also and, still and more importantly, to... there's an awful lot of support for every sport at Grand Canyon. Yeah, it doesn't try... matter what. They're still trying to figure out whether they want to be profit or non-profit. So they got to figure yeah. that out first. So Yeah, well, when they figure it out, but don't be surprised. I'm just telling you right now, don't be surprised if they become the next one to go. If people keep telling me Southern California, they, Southern California is not ready. They don't even have a D1, ACHA D1 team. And you know, you know what You know what the, USC has? What's that? Money. But they don't have a facility. Yeah, but... If you have the money, the facility is the easy is is probably easier than building the team. Yeah, maybe, but you're also in LA, so you got to find the room for it, the space yeah. for it. Okay, you know, and there's a lot of things that have to happen for them to make the jump. But they still uh, have Oregon, the money. Or yeah, I agree with that. Oregon would have a shot. I think. Well, that's the, because uh, yeah, but that's because the university president would go a couple of doors down and say, mm-hmm. uh, "Mr. Knight, can I have a check, please?" We right. want to do this. So, I mean. And I believe Utah and BYU are both schools that, that could be joining up. But I think the interesting thing in this whole thing is that we all know the WCHA is in a state of flux right now. Something's going to happen with the WCHA. And the other interesting piece of you this mean besides puzzle, the fact that they stabbed the two Alaska schools in Huntsville in the back? No. Besides that, that? No, I don't know if there is besides that. That's bad enough, isn't it? Um, yeah, but well, that's those, part of the those problem. Two, Alaska's two schools somehow got a reprieve. Now, I don't know how you get a reprieve. If, if they think it's dead in the water, they've got no hope, why would you give them more time to continue their program? So something's going on in the Not back dead yet. It's called, it's, 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 called, uh, it's called you're at 60 teams and you're looking to make it 61 and 62, not 58. Right, exactly. So anyway, that's uh, that's the stuff for another day, another topic. But right now we'll look forward to uh, the catamounts coming. And I've kind of teased them a little bit because we're getting some snow down here, not in the valley, but very close to the valley. Prescott's going to see some snow. Flag's going to see a lot of snow. So uh, Vermont's getting a little taste of it. I told them not to worry, though, because they're coming to the ocean. So just bring your warm weather clothes and your flip-flops. And I heard it's going to be... All the way down to 56 or 57 Ooh. degrees. I'm Man, gonna I'm tell, telling you. I'm going to tell you, though, my friend. Last weekend, <laughs> I went to Oceanside Ice Arena. Yeah. And okay. I had to wear two jackets. It was so cold in there. So the place is, uh, it, you know, you can say it's all relative, but I was freezing. My my hands were so cold, I couldn't really hit the shutter button on my camera. Yeah, no, anyway. I didn't know. Another another time for another topic. But. Yeah, tell me that in February. All right. So it's Thanksgiving. Uh, we got a lot of things to be thankful for. A couple things I want to shout out. We're uh, getting ready for the uh, Hiroki Wakabayashi uh, jersey auction. I didn't get the jerseys that I'd hoped to get. I did get a stick from the Coyotes. I got a stick. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I got a stick from the uh, ASU ACHA D1 goalies that had their team sign it. We got a couple of jerseys, one from Grand Canyon, one from U of A, and one from ACHA. Uh, we're still hoping to get a women's jersey and a NCAA jersey from ASU, but time is running out on that end of it. Doesn't so. matter. It, it, it's it's a it's a good cause. Whatever you get, we will uh, do what we can do. Yeah, that's all you can do. And, and then we, on the flip side of that, uh, another tragedy be struck us here, and I know it's a difficult thing to talk about because. Uh, you know, rivalries are rivalries, but hockey. No, 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 this hockey is, lives. this is, but, uh, this is different. That's not, the, this is not the same thing. That is not that you, uh, we can agree, disagree and, 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 and fight and, and despise a logo and, and colors. And, but no, that's, that's not the same thing as, uh, uh is supporting somebody in in that sort of uh, you know in a life and death struggle, and I know you're talking about your buddy Tim Gasson, um, who is uh, in a really bad spot right now. 
and uh, you know we're 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 pulling for him, we're hoping for him, and uh, hopefully he gets better. Well, you know Tim's in a real fight, but I will say when I started this five years ago, um, he was one of the first that that came aboard, and he moved he moved U of A hockey to where they're at. That's why they have all their games on YouTube right now, which in the streaming world is is their games are more what? more consistent than a lot of the games that you and I have tried to watch other places. Don't even so, get me started on that, please. Uh, but I got to give him a it's lot of credit for, for getting that set up. And like I said, uh, he was he was attacked with an illness suddenly. Um, yeah. It's, I don't want to get into a lot of details because I'm not, not necessary. to all the details. It's also not but, necessary. Uh, I do believe that he did undergo surgery today. Uh, I know if, he, if it actually happened, it was going to be uh, a lengthy surgery, five to seven hours, I'm told. So um, we don't know the outcome at this point as we speak tonight, but we all have it's a, it, it's a tricky thing that he's dealing with. And, um, you know, it hit him It hit him suddenly. He thought he, thought right. he had food poisoning. And the next thing you know, it's not food poisoning. It's something else. So right. our thoughts and prayers go out to Tim. I did Absolutely. a little uh, video that you can see on there that, uh, you know, we're all fighting for him because he is uh, – He's a hockey guy. He's right? a hockey and guy. We need all the hockey guys we can get in the desert Absolutely. southwest. All right. Anywhere. So that's an that's a shout out for there. Another thing I do want to touch about uh, is that we are doing a drive as we always do every uh, every December. I hope this one catches on, Paul, because I keep pushing this. But the 100 Club here in Arizona is very near and dear to our heart for our first responders, and the good friends over at uh, Arizona Sports do a radiothon for the 100 Club of Arizona, which helps the fallen um, right. fallen first responders, basically police, firemen, uh, Department of Justice, uh, DOC, all those people. Um, whenever there's a tragedy, the 100 Club steps up and is there for them. So our goal right now is to bring on some, uh, some corporate partners between now and the 18th of December. If you sign up for a corporate partnership, we make a, a donation as well, and we're hoping to bring a nice size check by – getting some corporate partners on board with us. So if you're listening, you got a business, you've been on the fence, you've been wondering whether you should jump on board or not, it's great value. I mean, I figured it out. It's about $41 a month to, uh, to become a corporate partner with us. And now you're going to be able to help out the uh, 100 Club as well. So by all means, get in touch with us. ITHSWSales at gmail.com is how you can reach me or you can direct message me on any social media. And I will promise I will get back to you that's going from now until the 18th, so we can hopefully make a check presentation on the 19th uh, to the 100 Club. So, good, lots good. of good stuff going on. I know you're you're preparing for uh, a trip out uh, to Southern California, so you can join us. We're going to be. No, I'll get uh, there eventually. Friday, Saturday, Sunday uh, at Irvine at Great Park Ice. Uh, tickets are available now. Uh, seats are somewhat limited, though it's not a massive building. So don't don't wait till the very end to buy your tickets. Get online and get it. You can go to our website and find it. You can go to greatparkice.com and uh, get your tickets there as well. But two great teams, Harvard right now number five in the pairwise as we speak, yeah. and ASU number fourteen. Those yeah. could both change for the better before we get to that point. Well, let's hope that'll be really good. That'll be really nice if uh, if that happens. Uh, you know, it's uh, we've got a while to go for that. Um, I'm looking forward to the trip. I'm uh, going to go visit my son who lives up in uh, Northern California before I come down to Southern California for the hockey games and, uh, you know, do a little sightseeing too. So I'm looking very much forward to that. Uh, but we got to get to that first and uh, we got about a month. Yeah, well, I've, I've ordered up about 47 degrees for a high, mid-20s at night, maybe a dusting of snow every now and then for you, just to make you feel at home. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate <laughs> that. That'll be good. That'll be All right. make you feel The final thing I want to say without uh, without talking college hockey right now is, as most of you have already know, Relive the Miracle 2020 is coming upon us uh, to Vegas at Thomas and Mack Center. Um, we're pleased to be a part of it. We're pleased to be there. We'll be there the uh, the weekend in February when ASU closes out their season at uh, at Wisconsin. Right. We're going to be keeping tabs on that, but we're also going to be talking to some 1980 gold medal Olympians. Uh, I'm just thrilled over this, and the the web page will be up shortly with our stuff. 
I know you've done a lot of research for us, Paul, on some of the, the Start players and, trying. and where they've been and where they are now, which I think is really cool because kick guy like Bill Baker and he, he wins a gold medal and uh, is now an oral surgeon, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> and, listen. And you've, got, you've got the guys like Mike Ramsey that played 1,200 games in the NHL and still he's known for the gold medal uh, in 1980. Uh, he, he kind of joked with what Jeff Holbrook and said that, you know, that's not too bad of a thing to be known for. No, absolutely no. not. So, and and I'm curious, I mean, hopefully uh, things work out and, 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 and I'm out there with you, but um, I'm just, I, I'm curious to, to hear some of the stories. I have a few questions of my own. Um, we know that, uh, you know, when movies get made that uh, they take a little poetic license All sometimes. Right. Um, I mean, you have a more of an insight of who else is going to be there besides the players than I do. Uh, but I'm not sure that anything has been confirmed yet. So uh, who knows? Uh, you know, like I said, I if, if, if I'm able to get out there, I'll, I'm going to be very excited for that. So, Well, here's the two things that I think that are really important about this and very unique about this. The fact that um, you're talking about a 40-year reunion for a team that the players were late teens, early 20s, right? Yeah, for so, the most part. Outside of uh, Schneider and Aruzioni, who were a right. little bit older, most of these guys were 19, 20, 21 Okay, so, so my point being is if this is a 40 reunion for a 20-year-old, that would mean that would put them in the 60-year-old age group. Yeah. We don't know. No, we don't. We've already, we've already lost a few, but we don't know how many we're going to have left in the 50-year reunion. We hope they're all there still, but hopefully, you just you know, life is life, right? Life is you life. Don't, yeah. You just don't know. And then secondly is the uniqueness of this is the fact that there are two generations here. There's one generation, which I am in and you are in, that actually – remember the game itself right absolutely um, but there's another group of people the younger generation if you're 30 or or younger you remember the movie right and or and, you've seen some video you've seen right YouTube but clips and but the impact's not the same and i think that's the difference and, and that's what i want to see be brought together at thomas and mac on february 22nd is how they bring both groups of these people and and when you're when you're a millennial, so to speak, and you've watched it on a movie screen, how do you relate to seeing that person, the real flesh and blood of Mike Ruzzioni or Jim Craig or Mike Ramsey or Bill Baker or whoever it might be? Um, uh, you know, I, I, you, you hope to find these things out. You know, and if you're in Phoenix, if you're in a valley, or you're in, it, it is not hard to get to Vegas. No. It's, no. it's not hard to get to Vegas. And honestly, you know, it it was awesome when they had this thing five years ago in Lake Placid. Um, but it's just a slightly different climate in right. February in Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, so that might help you uh, get a few more people to go. Um, and if you really, if you do have a chance to do this and, and get to this event, you really, really should because... Uh, you know, I'm sure that all the stories that they have haven't all been told yet. Uh, you know, you sit there and and sometimes you never know what comment will jog somebody's memory and lead right. into a story into another story. Um, and most of us have not heard a lot of these stories, right. even though some of them might be tired of saying them. But, you know, this is a connection to the best sports moment in the history of this country. And that's, that's whether you're talking baseball, football, basketball, whatever. I mean, this is the ultimate in David and Goliath story. Uh, these collegians were playing against professionals, even though that's not what the paycheck said. And, <laughs> and it was... How often do you get a chance to say you saw something that can be pointed to as a 
changing point in the trajectory of something. Correct. So listen, okay, and listen, it's 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 not World War II. It's not the invasion of Normandy. It was a hockey game, but that hockey game changed the trajectory, or that two weeks changed the trajectory of so many things in the hockey world and yeah. cha- really changed it as we know it today compared to what it was before those two weeks in February of 1980. And, you know, hopefully as we uh, do some of the features that you're planning on, uh, we can demonstrate that a little bit. And hopefully, if, you know, when we do the, when the event occurs, uh, some of the things that we can get or, or you know, we're able to, to, to showcase, we'll, we'll, we'll show that because uh, those two jerseys behind you are a direct descendant of that weekend and th- those two weeks. That is a fact. Well, we're looking forward to that. Um, we got turkey to eat tomorrow, so let's get some sleep and get some rest. And uh, and then we got hockey to cover from tomorrow week. Tomorrow, oh, actually Friday, Saturday, and then 13 consecutive weeks until this thing. Uh, comes to a head and we find out yeah. if we've got another trip to an NCAA tournament in store for the Arizona State Sun Devils. So happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I want to say uh, we are extremely thankful for everybody that helps us put this all together. We also are very thankful for our sponsors. We've got our good friends at Behind the Mask, at the uh, Ice Den, Scottsdale and Chandler, at Oceanside Ice, uh, M Drive, our friends over at Oxypow, another Oxypow Fantastic Friday coming up. We also have our... Uh, our friends in the ACHA world at ACHA, uh, the uh, University of Arizona, and also Arizona State. So plenty of room on the bandwagon. We want you to come on board and join us. And like I said, for now until the 18th of December is the time to do it because you can help out the 100 Club uh, on our behalf as well. So jump aboard from now until the 18th. And, Paul, we'll let you go. Get to uh, get to some festivities. We'll enjoy the same thing here in Arizona while it rains snows around us. Um, <laughs> hockey season is here, Paul. Yeah, it's great. I love it. Can't wait. Uh, when we're done, ta- uh, I don't know. I still say taping, you know, recording, recording whatever. <laughs> uh, Got to watch my Islanders get back on the uh, winning track after they had their 17th game point streak broken by the Ducks. So and, that'll well, be by the way, the Coyotes are playing the Ducks right now. And I'm glad uh, that was one more. Yeah, well, it's a, yeah, so it's a, we can we can update there, even though this will come out on Thursday night or Friday. Uh, and the one two one Coyote, so you know, hey, there you go, there you go. go Coyote, get it done. All right, Paul, happy Thanksgiving. Thanks you for too, all Scott. that you do for us. And, uh, we'll look Thank you. To see you next week. You got it.